Welcome everyone to Race Face TV and this special edition of Race Face Spotlight. Now we're going to go all the way out to California, to Menlo Park, California, where we find 13-year-old Race Face driver Jesse Love. Jesse, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing just fine. Just having a nice day out here in sunny California where it's not 120 degrees like Las Vegas, so having a good time. That's right. You just got back from Vegas. It was hot there, wasn't it? Oh yeah, about 106 when we jumped off the stratosphere, so that was a little crazy. 106, you jumped off the stratosphere. Do you not know that race car drivers are not supposed to take those chances? <laughs> That's true, yep. Was it fun though? Oh yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, okay. Well, let's, let's get right into our interview. And I wanna start off by talking about the late models. Now, Jesse races the, in the 5150 um, energy drink junior late model series at Madera Speedway. And Jesse was the 2017 uh, defending champion. And so Jesse, let's talk a little bit about the late model program and how that's going for you this year. Yeah, so uh, Kenny Shepard does a great job on the whole late model series. Uh, it's their, I think, third year running now. Uh, the first year champion was Diesel last too, I know very well. And then uh, last year we won the championship as long as five of the eight races. And then this year, uh, so far, we picked up three wins. Uh, and uh, we had an unfortunate DNF the last week where we lost a points lead as well. Uh, we had a clutch problem go out around lap three after qualifying uh, on the pole for the, or actually qualifying second. And then uh, you could tell we were a little bit off uh, coming off the corner. I actually learned uh, something very, well, I actually learned a lot that weekend with uh, the clutch, you know, going out and, now I look back on it, I could have caught it if I really knew uh, what a clutch when it goes out, what it does. Um, unfortunately, it was slowly making it slower throughout the day. And, um, you know, I come off the corner and the revs were kind of, you know, spiking up a little bit. Um, but it wasn't really loose. It wasn't cooking out. And coming into the round of the second restart of the main event, just rolled into the throttle in high gear and it just split up. I thought it was lighting up the tires and I was like, I'm not lighting up that bad, you know told my, my naked eye, and I was like, I swear I'm not lining up that bad. Um, but, you know, I thought I was just, you know, burning down the rubber coming to the green, and uh, but I guess that wasn't the case. It was the clutch problem, and uh, the RPMs were very high, so they, you know, diagnosed as a clutch problem, so we had to end the night there. But uh, overall, it was a good weekend. We knew that we had a lot of speed in the car that we could have used for next time. Well, those things are going to happen, and, and I know that, you know, being with that Nate Clower Motorsports team, I mean, that is – that I can remember, that's one of the only mechanical failures that you've had, maybe another one over the last couple of years, isn't it? Actually, no, that's the first one I think I've ever had with a car in Uh One time we had a, a brake uh, you know, caliper, you know, start to you know, overheat or something like that, but uh, that's probably me just riding the brakes too much. But, but who needs Yeah, who needs overall, brakes? I mean, that was one. Yeah, that's crazy. And that's why Mike Nake was... Uh, more mad himself than I was even upset. You know, I got out of the car and Mike Nake was so upset uh, with himself and there was, I was trying to tell him there's no reason to be upset, you know. Something like this happens, you know, one million times. And one of the reasons why he's such a great, uh, great car owner and, you know, head guy of the whole team is because he takes all this to heart and he, he knows that he won't be the same with it again. So, it's awesome. Yeah, you've got, a, you've got a great team in that late model series. So, you got, how many races left? I know you're, what, three points out of first? So Yes, sir. So I, I would think you probably can make that up the next week that you go to to Madeira and uh, put that put that number 38 Home Smile 5150 Energy Drink Late Model back in Victory Circle where it belongs. So let's shift gears a little bit. No pun admitted. Um, and let's talk about the BCRA Midget. So... Um, You've, you've had an interesting year with that as well. So kind of walk us through your, your 2018 series in that, in that midget and start off by sharing with us what you had to go through to be able to actually even drive that car this year with the age restriction. Yeah, so first off, if you weren't, you know, uh, staying in touch with the driving fives, which is awesome, Rob Wilkins did a great job with doing that. Um, but basically what's going on is I had to get a, I think two year waiver, uh, two to three year waiver in order to get into a midget at 13 uh, with a BCRA midgets. I was very grateful to have Del Morris and the rest of the BCRA, um, you know, crew or the uh, head directors. And they were all very, uh, I'm all very grateful for them for letting me uh, get in the midget as early as I can. 
I tested some midgets when I was uh, 12, and then I hopped into a full midget after driving the Focus for the past few years. I hopped in a full midget this year. We're getting very close to our first win. Uh, we have a first, second, third, and fourth. Uh, I think a fifth, too. So, uh, you know the next number is we're getting really close. And a few heat race wins, and we're getting real close to the main event. We have a uh, first uh, pole, a uh, quick time qualifying a few weeks ago at Stockton. So, if we can keep this momentum going. All right. So, talk to us a little bit about what it takes to be able to, to, to walk away from the late model and be able to get into that BCRA midget and the different driving styles. Um, because I know you run that midget at Madeira as well. So just share with us a little bit about the main difference besides the thing that ain't got any fenders on it and it's a lot lighter, but talk to us a little bit about what that's kind of like and what you have to do as a driver to be able to adjust to that. Well, the biggest thing that I have to do is not only uh, analyze when I'm in the car, um, really, you know, pay attention to what's going on in the car when I am driving it in a race. But um, also, eye racing helps a, bot, a bunch. So basically what I do is I'll go out there and I'll do a late model race. You know, Adam Lemke at Five Flags, a super late model. Then I'll go hop on uh, in a dirt sprint car at like Williams Grover or Old Door or something like that. And I'll keep going back and forth, back and forth. So that basically it's kind of like if I do have and have a race like last year, I had a late model race and then the same night, a uh, sprint or uh, no, a focus race at Merced. So it would have been very tough to transition straight from after the main event of a late model day and then a 30 lap main event and a, a focus. It'd be very difficult to do that. But irising really helps me out by being able to, uh, you know, get ready and be prepared for when I do go out there for the main event and I have to, you know, transition really quickly. Uh, basically, I, like I said, just hop in a late model race and then hop in a sprint car race to, within the next few minutes and it really helps a lot. Yeah, and I know that um, a lot of the viewers may not realize this, but Jesse won um, the USAC um, Focus Midget Series last year. He won the Asphalt Championship, the Dirt Championship, and then the Overall Championship, becoming the first three-time winner to win the Triple Crown. Now, your good buddy Adam is actually on his way to kind of pull that off this year. You think he's going to be able to do it? Yeah, I think so. Actually, I was at the Ventura, California uh, on the beat watching him race because I had no race that week. And he was uh, racing the Focus race. It was actually our first weekend off for a few months. So I'm happy to be back in the saddle this week. But I went out there to Ventura and, you know, helped him out and helped out my buddy Trace, who's my car for the full widget deal and crew chief and for the last few years. And he did very well. As, uh, and I kind of got to play the role of you know, kind of, you know, car handler guy, which is a little different than I usually do. Uh, I actually enjoyed it a bunch. And uh, probably I did bring my driver's bag just in case, in case I uh, asked that question. But yeah, Adam had a axle break too, uh, coming to the arena focus race. And I, I told him, I was like, rip the lid, dude, you know, in the heat race, you got this. And he went to the corner and just went straight. And I was like, I didn't mean that. But um, yeah, he had the axle break down, unfortunately, in his night. But uh, yeah, hopefully he can get it done. Uh, I think it would be a lot to his, mean a lot to his team. Um, I'm not even, you know, I'm not even uh, butthurt that you know he can do it. Um, hopefully he does because we're such great friends and we always try to support each other 100% of the time, and uh, that's probably why we're such great friends because we do support each other. Yeah, you guys got a great relationship together. Now I want to go back and say one thing about your late model race where your clutch went out. I don't know if you noticed it or not, but that was what they call the red blood moon night. And if you look down yeah. in, in turns one and two, well, let me tell you what, every race face driver had strange things go on that night. Anthony's car burst into flames on pit road before um, he went out for his second practice thing. Ryan ran over a tailpipe uh, running third in the K&N race that went through the front grill of his car and then up through the hood. And it just was like, I was going to make a rule like, okay, any more blood red moons, we pray for rain and we don't race on that night because I never seen such a weird thing go on because uh, it seemed like all of you guys had had some issues under that. So we do late yeah. model racing, we do BCR midget racing, and then you also run the sprint car in both the Hunt Magneto sprint car series and then you're running some spec sprint car races too. So now you, all of a sudden you're into that third type of car. And I know that maybe it's not as much difference going from a late model into a sprint car 
But what is it like even going from a BCRA midget into a full size sprint car? What, what's the difference there? Late model to a sprint car, um, late model to a sprint car is actually easier than a late model to a midget. Because a midget, um, so far from what I've heard, um, a midget race, you know, is probably the second hardest race we've ever had to, you know, try to really have to hustle the thing. You're, you're laughing when I say it's probably a bando is probably the hardest because a bando, you got to make, you know, what, 10 horsepower, like 20 horsepower down the straightaway, and it's that's a different story. But, um, yeah, midgets are probably the hardest car I've ever had to drive, uh, especially the dirt side as well and the pavement side. Payment side, you're constantly hustling the bar and making that momentum down the straightaway. Uh, you know, five miles an hour off the corners, ten down the straightaway, and that's really the difference between you know guys that, guys that win the race and the guys that don't. Um, but with the sprint car, it's kind of the sprint car has more momentum than the midget because of how much heavier they are, as well. The late model with late model being on pavement, you got to build up that momentum that you don't have the power to get to the, uh, tires yet in time. Um, so I would definitely say that they're a lot more similar than the BCR midget, but because uh, they're, I mean, the sprint car, the first time I went out in the sprint car, there's a video, it's just like so much inertia, you know, that's what Wally Pancras, uh, what's that, he told me, um, they're so like lazy and they just, you know, wait so long until you go in a 410 sprint car at Kokomo but, or Lawrenceburg, but, um, you know, they really are just so much more heavier than a midget, um, and a late model is, similar because they're heavier and there's a lot of inertia and in that that kind of pushes you up the track so um it's a little bit easier to trans uh transfer from the late model to the sprint car uh, hopefully it pays off this weekend but other than that it's pretty cool all right so <clears throat> you're going to be in this the the spec sprint this weekend at placerville see i got it right for once i did said the name of the track correctly all right so you know you spend a lot of time out on the road running in all these different divisions and different cities and different tracks. And you and your dad have created this amazing bond. And talk just a little bit about what that actually means to you. Um, so, you know, since I was about, you know, five years old, my dad, you know, put me in a corner for the first time at Tony Muscati shop and just sat me in it, right? And I kind of, I remember it pretty well. It's, it's not fading away. It's just kind of getting harder to remember, I guess, um, basically fading. But, uh, you know, it's, um, all I remember really was it was in, uh, in Tony Muscati's quarter midget and uh, he, you know, put me in it and I sat in it and it was just like, wow, you know, it's pretty cool. They, they fired up the car and I got to you know, rev it up for a little bit. And my dad, um, you know, looked at me and I was like, I want to do this. And he was like, all right, we're going to go give it a shot. So ever since then, we've been on the road almost every weekend. And there was a time there where, you know, we'd be on the road from you know, Thursday to Thursday till Sunday, um, you know, coming from back from Madeira, um, from the Port of races, Madeira to the Grands, to the Nationals, um, to Phoenix, to capital you know all these races and uh he really is my best friend we've uh, really created such a, a large bond and uh, it's very tough sometimes tensions come and they can't get high um but you know we always uh instead of arguing with each other more and more we we argue but we always make sure that we work through it and you know we never uh, leave the track mad at each other we're always you know we always make sure that we're happy and, uh we really create a really strong bond that you know, my secret weapon, uh, you know, it's it's not my right foot, it's not my left foot, it's not uh, just my need for speed or something like that. It's really my dad. He, uh, he's developed me to be the, the man I need and he, uh, the man I am, and I'm trying to be uh, somebody like him one day. Uh, he really is, you know, my best friend, and I love him for it. Yeah, I, I've, I've been able to see that, that bond, and that is something really special. So you're known as the Hammer. So where did that nickname come from? John Gerber, somewhere over there. Uh, he, that guy right there, I think he, I'm pretty sure. I'm like pretty 110 he created that nickname. Over at the uh, local core mid track, one of my first races. Uh, I won my first uh, core major race and he was like, drop the hammer. So ever since then, uh, I remember it kind of sticking from there on. Uh, yeah, so John Gerber, who, 
you know, somewhere over there in the office right now. Um, he created it. I'm pretty sure he did. All right. So now your dad was actually a racer, and your dad raced a little against Jeff Gordon, right? Yeah, my dad and Jeff were a very close childhood friend, best friends, if you will. Uh, they raced together for a long time, and uh, my dad knows uh, John's dad well. Uh, John's dad, uh, John Bickford, knows my dad uh, very well, too. And uh, we've, I'm actually very, very grateful uh, that I get to you know, meet guys like Jeff Gordon and John Bickford. At Calistoga, if you guys check out Just Love Racing, there's some pictures over there. Uh, when I got to, you know, spend some time with Jeff Gordon way back in probably 2015, and then I got to meet up with him again a few few weeks ago at Calistoga for the Sonoma race. So uh, that's really cool. My dad w uh, was very close to Jeff. Uh, my dad went to law school. Jeff went to pursue his career in racing, and ever since then, it's uh, my, they kind of split apart for a while. But uh, there's a nickname called Flash, right? Because uh, I don't believe my dad was best friends with Jeff Gordon for a long time. Um, but my dad used to call Jeff, his nickname was Flash, right? So uh, he was like, hey, Flash. And Jeff turned around and was like, dude. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't even know that, uh, 2015. So ever since then, um, uh, Jeff has really been my idol. Uh, he always has been. He was a really great guy. I got to talk with him. And every time I do, I'll learn something new. So that's awesome. Yeah, and I know doubt it. Uh, before the race in Sonoma, you got to hang out with Ryan Blaney a little bit, and uh, we, I actually uh, posted that video up. So that was pretty cool too. So let's take um, a few minutes, and, and we're talking about relationships, and let's talk about this special relationship that you have with with Tress and and also Nate Clower. I mean, you, you guys seem to be more than just you know car owner and driver. And I think, again, that's something that a lot of race car drivers um, would love to have that type of relationship with their, with their car owners. So let, let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so um, Trace, you know, he's, you know, like my big, my, my bigger brother. Um, I was on there for a week working on this out of the new uh, major that we're building for the rest of the season and for next year. And, uh, yeah, he's taught me a lot of great lessons and he's always been there for me. First time I met him was 2014, 2013. And I was just at watching the midget race, and Jake Swanson was there, Trace, and you know I got to meet them for the first time, and it was really cool. And um, this past year, I, I got to the opportunity to drive uh, Trace's new car, um, and Trace's uh, 1998 Jason Leffler, you know, short tube, uh, you know, short cage into Jason Leffler championship car. And uh, you can eat mashed potatoes off that thing. It's so clean and so nice. And uh, Trace and I really have a strong bond. Uh, you know, we always overcome adversity, which is something that is very hard to find in uh, a team where we'll, if we butt heads, we always make sure that uh, not to do it again, to make sure that when we're at the track, it's business. And we actually have a really great chemistry. And I think our team on the open wheel side probably is the you know, best chemistry. I think I can probably say with confidence probably the best chemistry in you know any team in the country because we all know each other so well you know nitro's been there since the beginning that guy's the hardest working guy i've ever met he's so awesome and you know dawson's always there and dawson and i are very close friends and he's always working his tail off everybody is and, uh there's always joking and uh sometimes messing around and just you know having a good time and, but then when it comes race time everybody's serious and Jason Weedy did a, a, a photo, you know, kind of journal and book on us, and it, it really showed the emotions. And I encourage you guys to go check it out. And basically, it showed you uh, beginning of the day uh, to the end of the day, and it went through so many stages of emotions from you know just having a good time, just laughing, you know, messing around, and then race time, qualifying. My dad is up on the fence, like screaming, like oh. Um, and then, you know, when we won the race, you know, Trace and everybody else just jumped up and down and screaming, you know, having a good time. And then after the race, we'll all just have a good time and, you know, celebrate uh, the win. It really shows you um, how great of a team um, we have and I'm very lucky to have. And uh, Trace and I, we have a very strong bond that hopefully we can keep going here, uh, especially on the midget side and the Western State side. So I'm very grateful to have such a great team, uh, as well as the late model side, too. Uh, I'm not as close uh, to Mike as I am Trace because I've known Trace for so long. But Mike and I, uh, 
Mike, uh, Dave, and I uh, kind of – Dave and I like to call each other oh, him. He's he's all big time now right in, in his own car. Uh, too cool for me now. <laughs> uh, Dave, if you're watching this, you better be at the next race. But, um, yeah, you know, Dave and I, I call ourselves the dynamic duo. I think we're undefeated uh, in the late model series whenever we work together. And uh, Mike Nake as well. Mike is – He'll call you at about 3 o'clock in the morning. He'll be like, Mike, what? It's 3 o'clock in the morning. He's like, oh, I'm just thinking about how to make that car faster. What was a car doing about halfway through the race? And you're like, I'm sleeping. <laughs> you know, he's constantly, you know, on kill mode, just go, 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 you know, making sure that the next race, the car is better than it was the last race. And he's more, he's probably the biggest racing junkie I've ever seen. And uh, that's why I love hanging out with him so much and going to the shop and, the chemistry at their shop is also really cool. Um, I went there to get fit in the late mall. I didn't want to leave. You know, it's pretty cool. So I'm very grateful to have the teams I do um, be able to work for. So it's really cool. Yeah. So for all of you younger racers that are actually watching this show, um, I want you to hear what Jesse just said. It's all about surrounding yourself with good people, good quality people to help you advance in your career. And uh, Jesse, you guys have definitely done that. So let's talk about the plans for the rest of 2018 real quick before we wrap up today's show. Yeah, so for the rest of 2018, uh, we'll be doing a lot of sprint car races and a lot of uh, midget races as well as, you know, potential, potentially um, some races back east uh, for, for the uh, remaining of the year. And uh, finishing out the Junior Late Model Series, hopefully we can cap off the championship in that. It's going to be very, very, very hard to win the championship in the V Star Images Series, as I was not able to compete in uh, two of the races, as well as I'm missing another race um, for uh, a conflict with the V Star Images as well as the Drew Late Models. So, hopefully, uh, if everything goes to plan so far, uh, we're in second place in points. Hopefully, we can keep going and uh, maybe, you know, make up some ground the next few payment races before the uh, last dirt race of the year. So Trace Van Dyne's going to be a great car. Hopefully we can get the job done um, in the Juliet models as well as the B-Star Midgets. And hopefully we can cap off the season uh, with a few more open wheel wins as well as uh, the late model side. All right. Well, let's, let's real quick, let's give a shout out to your sponsors. I know that you've been flashing that 5150 energy drink since we started. I see the Mobile One in the background as well but any other sponsors you want to give a call out to now don't yeah, get them uh, mixed mobile. up i don't want you drinking the mobile one as well as canon filters uh you know make sure you go if you ever you know drive a sprint car or any uh even a street car you know make sure you go check out canon filters and you know if that's not giving the power you need go to mobile one as well get yourself uh, some oil and, and then when you're getting tired from working on the car all day go get a 5150 and uh I can't thank everybody enough. Uh, all my sponsors, like Fleece Insurance, Toyota Race Development, um, our newest sponsor, uh, Canon Filters and Mobile One, uh, Race Face Brand Development, which I got my website at justyloveracing.com, and uh, which Rod Wortham's been doing a great job uh, making it look nice and clean. Home Smiles, which is, I'm actually at Home Smiles headquarters right now, so go check out Home Smiles if you're on the West Coast. And hopefully, we'll be branching out to the East Coast soon. But yeah, so hope you guys have a great weekend. All right. Well, Jesse, thanks so much. There you've got it. 14-year-old, 13-year-old, sorry, 13-year-old Jesse Love, Menlo Park, California, one of the top up-and-coming young drivers on the planet anywhere. Very versatile. So I want to thank all of you for being with us. And as always, we encourage you to go out and support local racing in your communities. And make sure to go to jessieloveracing.com. All of his social media uh, platforms are connected to that website. Go out, follow him on Facebook, follow him on Instagram. And again, everybody, thank you for being with us. And we'll see all of you back here in two weeks with another Race Face TV, Race Face Spotlight. Everybody have a great evening.